My name is Shien Young, and I'm the Protected Areas Director for the Belize Audubon Society. So through the Biopharma project, we were able to develop a strategic enforcement planning manual for Belize's protected areas. And this was done uh, in partnership with, this, with Wild Truck and the Belize Audubon Society. Um, and the, from that manual, we were able to develop a strategic enforcement plan for Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary, Victoria Peak Natural Monument, Blue Hole Natural Monument, Half Monkey Natural Monument, and the Greater Lighthouse Reef Atoll. We have also been able to assist CARS um, with the development of their strategic enforcement plan for Tapir Mountain Nature Reserve, and now we're helping or assisting Southern Environmental Association with the development of their strategic enforcement plan for Glen Spit, Silk Key Marine Reserve, and Laughing Bird Key National Park. Enforcement is, is beyond boots on the ground. It, it requires an integrated approach to, to management and it feeds into the larger program of protected areas management. So strategic enforcement planning is one element, but one that is important because it ties into natural resource management, uh, which is the core of, of many conservation or all conservation organization. Um, the planning manual uh, allows for, for institutions like Southern Environmental Association and, and CARS to have an understanding on, on the status of key conservation targets. Understanding those status is very important because then you know, you're able to identify uh, drivers and threats that are affecting these conservation targets. And it's within that context that you're able to identify uh, stakeholders who are causing these threats and also develop key strategies um, that are able to, to mitigate um, the threats. The Tapir Mountain Nature Reserve is located between the ATM Cave and the Barton Creek Cave. Uh, it's roughly about 6,250 acres of protected land, uh, home to our national animal, the tapir. It's a protected area that has a designation of a nature reserve, so there's no tourism or any other activities except for research and education allowed in the nature reserve. Over the series of uh, workshops in the last couple of days, BKHC was able to develop objectives um, to look at what activities we can actually do to mitigate some of the illegal activities or the threats. Um, so we have, for example, hotspots that we identified where potential hunting, logging, um, and even agricultural encroachment um, may or may, may be occurring or might actually occur in the future. And so um, with the questions that were asked, uh, our team was able to really sit down, think about, you know, what are the, the best areas to plan our enforcement, um, our surveillance and enforcement, where do we need to concentrate our, our time um, and our resources. So the workshop was um, asking a lot of questions where we can identify strengths and weaknesses in our enforcement um, and so by answering these questions, our team was able to um, identify what would be needed, what areas, the hot spots, um, where we need to focus our resources. The northern boundary of the entire Maya Mountain Massive. So we have this big block of protected areas. Okay, today's workshop was to look specifically at how effective we are in terms of managing and enforcing the um, protection of the Tapir Mountain Nature Reserve. And so we have to be realistic, we have to be honest, we have to look at where we are, what we're doing, where we're going, and analyze our own performance and management effectiveness in order to en 
ensure that we are addressing the challenges that we face in the field. And so we are very grateful for this opportunity to meet as board and staff and to get the support of the Belize Audubon Society in this effort. And we want to say that we found the analysis and the interaction and discussion that we've been having very, very useful in building the capacity, in building the teamwork, and in providing a path and a steps that we will need to take to address some of the issues that have emerged during the discussion and deliberations that we've had so far. The strategic enforcement planning is, is, is a very, um, very important process to, to go through as, as it guides the um, monitoring efforts uh, that is being done within a protected area. And I like the process being, being taken here where it's not, uh, where Shane mentioned compliance. So in the enforcement scheme, you don't always look at the hardcore boots on the ground, um, police and, and, and this type of, you know, kind of have a, have a force, but really look at compliance. You, you also have a voluntary compliance that comes with that heavy engagement and involvement of, of your primary stakeholders. So all of that forms part of what would be now uh, a, a strategic enforcement plan. Um, so that's, that's, that's really important for us um, at the National Biodiversity Office. We, we, we encourage that at all levels you have uh, um, that participation and that engagement, that involvement of your communities, primarily your communities, which are the, you know, these resource users, that uh, people that depend on the resources within the, within the protected area. Um, C has, well, C co-manages two um, marine reserves, the Garden Spit and Silkies Marine Reserve and the Laughing Bird National La Laughing Bird Key National Park. The operating base for GSSCMR, and I would say the main base uh, used by the rangers is located on Little Water Key. Well, um, the workshop really uh, brought in the per my perspective and uh, showing me the limitations that C has currently has at the moment um, in regards to enforcement um, and the planning. And it gives me the opportunity to um, come to understand the importance of proper planning uh, for these enforcement um, activities, as well as giving me, it, it's given me insight into um, you know, seeing how we can further develop the enforcement activities for the organization uh, within and around the protected areas. For me, it was beneficial to see um, where we have a, a gap in the resources that we use um, for the enforcement activities, what uh, technologies and and insights are available for us to incorporate uh, within the enforcement plan. It interests me that the different guidelines I was seeing need to improve upon within Southern Environmental Association because I feel like we got downfalls and different things we need to help ourselves improve upon within this organization. Certainly it provides uh, structured guidelines for the protected areas manager um, to, to put in place and to, to address some of these core issues that are affecting or uh, impacting these conservation targets. It, is also, it also ties into operational planning and it also ties into to fundraising in terms of it identify gaps and prioritize where resources are uh, are most likely to be invested. It assess the institution's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. As an institution, using the conceptual module, it also assess you know, the conservation targets. 
its status, right? And having an understanding of the status, you're able to develop key strategies, right? That provide some guidance over the next five years as to where resources are to be implemented. For example, in the, in the case of Southern Environmental Association, um, clearly there's need uh, for investment in additional human resources. Also, there is a need to look at capacity building in fisheries enforcement, law enforcement, um, trial preparation. And also there is a need for further collaboration um, with the relevant authorities, um, the Belize Fisheries Department, the Belize Coast Guard, um, the National Biodiversity Office, and also the, the tourism stakeholders and the fisheries stakeholders um, in, trying to address it, in trying to address the issues um, that affect these conservation targets. With this training here now, I think it will enhance more of the planning strategies. So we're gonna think more likely we're gonna, if we do this planning strategy, then we're gonna carry our job more effectively and we will have more idea on how to go about doing our job in a timely manner. It will be beneficial for us because um, recently we have not got this type of um, training or insight of how these um, strategies, the planning part of it, the enforcement. So it will really give us an insight of how we should go about doing this. So it will be beneficial for the most part of it.